हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द सेशन ऑफ मूविंग एवरेज मेथड्स टुडे इन द प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव कंप्लीटेड द सिंपल मूविंग एवरेज एंड वेटेड मूविंग एवरेज एंड वी हैव आल्सो इलास्ट्रेटेड देम यूजिंग एक्सेल एंड नाउ वी विल फोकस ऑन एक्सपोनेंशियल मूविंग एवरेज एंड इट्स एप्लीकेशन एंड इट्स इलास्ट्रेशन यूजिंग एक्सेल टू सो लेट्स गो टू अंडरस्टैंड what is exponential moving average why it is been used widely in the industry and how it is been calculated so exponential moving average the terminology itself it says that you know you will have the moving average like the way you have calculated the simple moving average or say weighted moving average the concept will remain same but here or the moving average process will remain same but only thing is that maybe your cluster of or range of the data that you are taking in the club We will also remain same. Say seven period or ten periods or say four periods, it will remain same. Only thing is that here in exponential moving average, you assign some additional weight to the immediate past data. So that additional weight assignments are being done through a formula. Therefore, we call it as exponential moving average, and that formula actually illustrated to the older data in an exponential manner. So it smoothed out with the exponential way, and there will decay uh, decay concept of the data or the weights. to the older data therefore we call it as exponential moving average otherwise it is same like moving average process so let's understand look at here since it gives some additional weight to the specific weight there is a formula to the immediate data and rest of the weights are been distributed to the older data in your period so therefore there is a terminology called decay factor you can see this decay factor it's actually nothing but how you distribute your weight to the older data and slowly slowly it will be smoothed out through a you know exponential manner and then initial value whatever the weights you give we call it as exponential smoothing constant so this constant you have to find and then you take a weighted average of immediate past data and the rest data the forecast data of that period and you drag the moving average let's see one illustration then we'll get to know remember these points this exponential moving average moving average reacts faster to the new data compared to the simple moving average so this is what most important part which is involved in exponential moving average that was not there in the weighted moving average or say in a simple moving average because that that in that case you take the simple weights and also weights you assign through optimization but here what you do you give a specific weight to the immediate period so therefore you give special emphasis or special importance to the immediate period in case you want to give more like you know you want to track the tra trend of the data immediate trend of the data in that case you know this exponential moving average actually work very well so let's see how it works so this is the formula of exponential moving average first of all you have to select the weight how much weight you want to assign or the smoothing constant you want to assign to the immediate period suppose you are at sixth period so then to the fifth period how much weightage you want to give this alpha you have to find there is a way of calculating that smoothing factor or the smoothing constant which will define the decay part of your exponential moving average the remaining weights to the older data so this way you can calculate it i'll tell you detail so then first you assign then you choose the time period that you want to select say four period or seven period or 20 days moving average whatever depending on your data and the problem and the statement and the context of the study and then select the alpha value accordingly you will get the alpha value automatically because if a, if the number of period is seven then n will become seven here if the number of period is 20 then n will become 20 here so this way you can calculate your smoothing constant to the immediate period so once you know that then you know calculate the initial moving average using the simple moving average that means the initial value of to start with the exponential moving average you need some initial forecast like some initial value you have to assign how you will assign the initial like forecast value to a data that's been taken into account through simple moving average and then once that initial step of assumption is done and you got a initial forecast value to a particular set or particular data particular period and then you use your exponential moving average and then you compute the process and drag the you know iteration and you will get the forecast for the forthcoming period so here is the you know formula exponential moving average formula is nothing but look at this is nothing but you know the actual data of previous period and the alpha constant that you are assigning plus weighted average plus previous period exponential moving average into 1 minus alpha so how does it work suppose i can give one illustration you will get to suppose you have a data say so like this type of data you have right and suppose you want to consider say four period average 
so fourth 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 period exponential moving average right you want to consider so in that case what you do fifth period you say because you have taken four period average plus 1 minus alpha into y5 forecast so how will get that y5 forecast this y5 forecast you have calculated by simple moving average for initial period and then once you get the forecast for next period say y6 period you got the forecast so now you have a actual y6 and the forecast of y6 period now using this you can calculate the seventh period forecast so you have actual say now for y7 what will be the y7 forecast seventh period using exponential moving formula you take alpha into y6 plus 1 minus alpha of y6 hat which you have already calculated now you are using this exponential weightage here this formula you are using actually so this way one by one you can drag your calculation and you may calculate your exponential moving average now how will calculate alpha suppose if you have a say 20 days moving average suppose if you take 20 days moving average in that case or 20 period moving average so in that case your alpha will be 2 by 1 plus 20 some you know 9 percent or 10 percent weightage come over here if you take say you know 10 days moving average in that case or 10 10 period moving average in that case your alpha will be 2 by 1 plus 10 around 18 percent it comes 18 point something so this way you have to initialize or you have to give initial value to the alpha that weightage to the immediate period because you want to give more importance to the immediate period and then you can carry forward even you can consider 200 days moving average also in stock market people is 200 days moving average i will give illustration for that also at a later stage so let us see this entire exponential moving average calculation process using a numerical illustration so here you can see the illustration so here suppose we have considered a four period average and we will use exponential moving average but initially you know you know to start with your fifth period because four period average you have decided you will fix it the range is fixed now now what do you do for fifth period you do not use exponential moving average because you do not have an initial data you do not have the forecast for the fifth period so you consider that forecast using simple moving average just take the average of this four period and you make the forecast for the fifth period the error part you can write down that we will discuss later like the way we have done for a weighted moving average same we will be replicating here for this error calculation for the exponential moving average that we already understood but we will discuss at the later stage now let us focus about the calculation process of exponential moving average so here we found the forecast for period 5 so here it is y5 actually so forecast period we found using the uh, simple moving average now now once you get the forecast value for period 5 you have two point of reference what is that the actual of uh, actual of period 5 look at here the actual value of period 5 and the forecast value of period 5 so suppose y y5 actual value of y5 and the forecast value now using this formula look at the previous formula previous slides look at this formula using this formula look at this this formula you can forecast the forecast value of you can get or calculate the forecast value of y6 look at my pen here so forecast value of y6 or simply this formula so you go to the next and see how i have calculated the forecast for sixth period so now sixth period forecast is nothing but so previous period actual plus how much alpha 40 percent weightage i have given right how come i found 40 percent here i have taken the weightage the alpha value is nothing but you know 2 by 1 plus 4 because 4 period average i have taken so this way i have calculated the weightages for immediate period this is what the additional part in exponential moving average the weightage or the smoothing constant or smoothing factor you have to initialize through this formula and once you define it it can be changed the formula can be changed but generally people follow this this logic of assigning exponential smoothing weights to that remaining 40 per 60 percent actually for this set of data you are distributing like you know for period 4 you can see the data here for period 4 you 31 point for period 4 you are giving 40 percent weightages for period 5 you are giving 40 percent weightages remaining 60 percent weightage you are giving to the forecast of period 5 that means which from where you got it from the previous data sets so effectively you are giving the remaining 60 percent to the older data you have spread it and you might say that sir we are taking only period 5 actual and period 5 forecast so therefore we are just taking a weighted average of that period 5 only 
no you are actually taking into account of the previous data data points how come because you have taken this period fifth forecast from the previous data and therefore that in a iterative process that data are also been involved over there in y5 so therefore the 60% weightage that you are thinking about giving to y5 forecast only actually you are spreading out to the older period when i will drag the moving average you will get to know the concept in a better manner now you got the forecast for fifth period using say simple moving average now using this fifth period actual and fifth period forecast you can get using the exponential smoothing formula you may get the forecast for sixth period i can show you how how come it is it will be 0 0.4 into 25 plus 1 minus 0.4 into wait 1 minus 0.4 into you know 27.5 this is nothing but the forecast for period 6 actually so now you got sixth period actual and sixth period forecast using that you can calculate the seventh period forecast similarly suppose you want to calculate say 18th period forecast how will you get 17th period actual plus 17th period weightage of like 25 into say 0.4 plus 26.484 into 0.6 so this way you can calculate the period for 18th and you are actually following a moving average you are dragging is actually but in a exponential smoothing with the help of exponential smoothing constant so this is what exponential moving average formula or moving average model and effectively you are dragging the moving average by considering the older data in a specific manner that is 30 percent weightage you are giving to the immediate past out of four periods immediate past period is getting suppose here you are calculating this 18th period say so you are giving weightage 100 percent weightage to these four but this 17th period are getting weightage of 40 percent this is fixed remaining 60 percent you have distributed to the old calculation of exponential moving average the forecasted value you are actually integrating all the older data one by one and you are dragging it and effectively all this are being come, come here into the forecast of forecast value of 20 uh, 17th period and once you get the 17th forecast and actually you have you can calculate the weighted average and you get the forecast for 18th period these are the exponential moving average model and now you can calculate the weight error part once you get the forecast value you can calculate the error part so this error you calculate and the absolute error you can calculate also like you know taking by taking the absolute value and then square of absolute value you can take so now you get the error if you take the absolute value of the error you will get you know the absolute value here and if you take the average you will get mad if you take absolute value by the actual value say 25 into 100 you will get the percentage error right and if you take the average of them you will get the mean percentage error now if you take the square of the absolute value you will get the mean square error and then if you take the average of them i mean error 13 points are there i think 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so if you take the average of the square of error you will get the mean square error and if you take the square root of it you will get the rmac so this is what the exponential moving average and you want to see the graph of it you can see the graph of them also so here also like weighted moving average or simple moving average you have also taken four period average to start with the beginning point for fifth period forecast but here you have given you know some additional weight specific weight to the immediate period how much weightage you have given 40 percent that is fixed so that means you know 2 by 1 plus 4 so this weightage you have given to the immediate period and then this is what your alpha and then you drag this so when you when you are forecasting this next period so sixth period you are giving 40 percent weightage to this period you are dropping the older period and you are considering this four period this four period and you are making forecast for the next period and that actual and you can write down the error and error here that we have discussed in the previous slides so this way you can make the forecast for the forthcoming period and this process are called you know exponential moving average model this is very popular in the you know financial sector especially in the stock market analysis because they in, they want to see the movement of the stock price and they want to do a swing trading over here there so in that case they actually see how they actually gives the importance to the immediate period how the last one hour or two hours or last 20 minutes what happened or last five minutes what happened so this way they break the times periods and they actually use the formula and they calculate even for the longer period so for 10 days 20 days or so you know 
200 days also they follow 50 days also they follow this exponential moving average because they feel this is better than the simple moving average because they give importance to the immediate product. For example, imagine if you have a 200 days moving average, if you consider your cluster of 200 days, so you need good amount of data, right? Huge amount of data you require and then you drag your moving average and in that case if you take 200 days moving average, your alpha value will be 2 by 2 by you know 1 plus 200. So around 1% weightage will come over, less than 1% probably. So this much weightage we are giving to the immediate period. Rest of the period of, out of your 200 days club, rest of the periods will assume some weights, but that will be distributed exponentially. Therefore, we call it the exponential moving average method. Now, we will illustrate this exponential moving average using Excel. So let us go to the Excel and understand this calculation process. So here I have opened the Excel sheet, you can see here. Same data sets I have taken and for period average I will be considering. So, here you can see 0.4. So, how come I got 0.4? Look at here the formula, look at here. So, 2 by 1 plus 4. So, it is coming out to be 40 percent of it, right? And this will fix and now we will drag the moving average. But for fifth period, as I mentioned, for fifth period you do not have the moving exponential moving average formula. So, you take the initial assumption of simple moving average. So, here we have taken the simple moving average to start with the initial data for fifth period. So, that sixth period onwards you can actually use the exponential moving average formula. Now, this is the forecast simple average I have taken for fifth period. This is the forecast and this is the error you can see and the square error is written here in the right hand side and MAC I have calculated. So, look at the square error. So, that part different we will discuss later. Now, you see the formula. Now, once you get fifth period actual and fifth period forecast using the formula that I have shown you like you know let me write it here again using the formula. So, alpha into actual actual say plus 1 minus alpha into say forecast right. So, this formula we are using now. So, fifth period you suppose here let me write down this way also. So, you will get a better clarity. So, you will get the forecast for the sixth period. So, now this look at here. So, for sixth period how we will calculate this look at this alpha of fifth period actual alpha is how much? The exponential constant, the smoothing constant is 40 percent, alpha by actual plus 1 minus alpha say 60 percent of the forecast. So, this forecast you got the from the previous data. Now, you drag it. Once you drag it for 7th period, 8th period, you are considering the previous period, but actually you are distributing the weight 40 percent to the immediate, rest 60 percent to the older, right. And once you smooth it out, actually you are actually you are considering this exponential average where the decay function are coming and 50, 40, 40 percent weightage to the immediate period rest 40 percent you have distributed to the older period which will give you a combination of the forecast to the to that period through exponential moving average that is it. So, now you do it now if you drag this now sixth period calculation you have done for seventh period same way sixth period data and forecast you found now exponential smoothing average moving average is actually working. Now you have got the calculation and the forecast you drag it I can show you the let us drag it. So, you got the forecast for all the periods now. So, here you want to see the 18th period forecast look at 17th period actual let me put a color 17th period actual and 17th period forecast we found using the form moving average formula and you using them you calculate your forecast for the 18th period that is it and you found the forecast. So, this forecast is the forecast for the 18th period right hold it. Now, we have calculated the error here look at the error suppose here you can see say error say here actual minus forecast this way I have calculated all the error and the square part we have taken I have calculated only the mean square error in this sheet. But if you see in the previous session we have discussed detail of calculation right for MAD, MAP and MAC etcetera and we have found the calculate intercalculation for simple moving average and for weighted moving average. We have done that for name method also in some session. So, now we are concentrating only the MAC and the RMAC value. So, we will calculate the MAC now the average of all the error here you can see the sum of the error and then average of all the error look at this total by total error square and sum and then by 13 and then we found the RMAC which is the square root of this. So, you found the RMAC and you got the forecast also and how much is the RMAC 1.98 remember it using this formula we have used the calculation of alpha and the corresponding forecast through exponential moving average and the forecast is 26.10 that is not an objective I already told you that what forecast value we are getting through a particular time series formula or moving average formula that is not the main part main part is the RMAC value what is the error or MAC value or the 
measure of accuracy. So, now let us see this three calculation process or you know in a summary in our PPT. So, that, that means we have calculated the simple moving average, we have calculated the exponential moving average, we have calculated the forecast of you know ex exponential moving average and weighted moving average. Now, we have got the RMSE for all of them and the corresponding forecast of them. So, I now will compare all three and put in a single graph. So, let us see and look at the final summary here. So, if you see here we have done the comparison of all the three models of moving average. So, simple moving average for the same data sets right. So, MAD you found this, this and for simple moving average and for weighted moving average and for exponential moving average are these values. Now, if you see the MAP mean absolute percentage error, which model is for the same data, which model is giving the least uh, error percentage error, weighted moving average. So, we, we can say that weighted moving average is better, even RMSE if you check RMSE, look at weighted moving average is giving the least error. So, higher accuracy, least error means higher accuracy. So, therefore, we can conclude that for this particular data sets that we have used and we have tested all three model and weighted moving average is best, but everybody has a merit simple moving average takes simple average only if the data are steady it is fine, but weighted moving average gives the data understand the data pattern and gives some additional weightage to the particular period and how to optimize the weight to the different periods that also we have discussed using optimization solver you can find the weightages for all the period. That means, even if you take a 7 days moving average you will get the 7 weightage right for all the days all the periods. So, that also weights you can also calculate for using the excel solver. So, that means, for all 7 period the w 1 to w 2 up to w 7 the world weightage will be finalized using the data and you can optimize it. So, once you finalize that you drag it you will get the forecast for weighted moving average. Now, for exponential moving average you do not have to optimize the weights because it has been assigned how much the to the initial period to the immediate past period because if you want to see the trend of the movement of the data quickly. So, in that case exponential moving average is very good and in that case you give weightage like alpha 2 by 1 plus n. So, this formula you assign to the immediate period, rest of the weights you distribute to the older period of your moving average process and this is what exponential moving average and all three method we have discussed and here is the summary. For this particular data exponential moving average may not be better and weighted moving average is coming to be the best, but for different data especially the stock price analysis etcetera exponential moving average gives a better accuracy and it people actually follow exponential moving average than the weighted moving average. So, we understood all the three model now and here you can see the graph and to some extent for this particular data all are giving good predictions, but you may not be able to understand the which graph is best, but in terms of error error and the forecast accuracy we can conclude that weighted moving average is better for this particular data sets. So, this is what the three models of you know moving average methods there are many more methods which you can understand you can learn, but for the time being we understood these three methods which have been popular and been used in the industry. Now, one part I have to you know discuss with you that why exponential moving average is so popular in the stock market. Because if you go to you know money control or if you go to you know screener or if you go to any new channels of you know the stock market say you know CNBC or say you know ET etcetera. So, you will get to know or even G business you will see that most of the experts will talk about moving average exponential moving average. They do not use the word exponential moving average, but they actually use this calculation which I have shown you today the exponential moving average, but they use the order DMA like DMA, DMA. So, how many like you know to 7 days DMA, DMA, 20 days DMA, 50 days DMA, 200 days DMA, what does it mean? It means that they are taking the stock price say, say you have a data and they are taking say 20, 200 days average. For long term predictions for long term investor 200 days moving average are good, but for, or 50 days moving average are good, but for short term predictor or say investor you know trader 7 days 20 days moving average is good even short period like 2 say 7 minutes small period you can consider and you can take the average and you can take the exponential average and you can carry forward the forecast. For example, here you can see I will I'll show you one example here if you see here how the technically these models are so popular and why people follow it you will get to know. I will show you one example how I in stock market people use this particular exponential moving average method for their analysis. So, technically how you can read it let us see suppose you have a data say, say stock price is moving like this say stock price is moving suppose like this suppose right. And suppose if you uh, see let me put a different color and if you see say 200 is moving average suppose 200 is I am talking about for long term investors. 
suppose 200 is moving average are coming out to be suppose like this suppose like this so in that case this is your 200 is moving average this one and this is your stock price right the red one so in that case what happens you can see that that over a period of time you see that your stock price is trading above your 200 is moving average that is it is in overbought zone so don't buy now you wait for correction there may be high chance that it may go down stock price may go down but now you know in case suppose if you take another case suppose you know in case your stock price are say suppose you know are like this trading like this and your 200 is moving average say are here so in that case what happens your stock price is trading below the 200 is moving this is your 200 is moving average look at here so your stock price is trading below 200 is moving average there is a high chance that it may bounce back if the you know fundamental of the stock is good management is good there is a high chance the stock price may go up because 200 last 200 is average says that it is oversold it is in oversold zone that means there is a less chance it can have it, it may go down further but there is a less chance that it may go down further there is a high chance that it may go up so you invest here in this zone you invest because it is trading near 200 days average below average 200 is below average so this is what you know people use the technical chart people read the technical chart through 200 days moving average or 50 days moving average and you get a forecast and accordingly you can see the accordingly you can trade or you can invest you can buy the shares and sell the shares so now if you look at here look at this graph i have taken from a source so you know look at this graph the blue graph is a 20 days exponential moving average say 20 days only for short term prediction you can think about for trader or three months trader etc you can buy sell etc this type of recommendation can be done through this graph let's see how you can make a recommendation or you can get a better insights about stock price analysis through this exponential moving average now suppose if you see the stock price look at the movement of the stock price it's been mentioned here in the graph and look at the 20 days exponential moving average so if you see here look at here stock price is trading here right look at here so your 20 days average is below the stock price so stock price is overbought zone so don't buy here and there is a, there might be chance that there will be a correction so better to wait for correction and then you buy look at here 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 it's below it is trading below 200 days moving average 20 days moving average so you buy here buy here buy here there is a high chance that it may bounce back look at how it's bounced back if you look at this case stock price is quite high it's in overbought zone so don't buy here wait for corrections otherwise you will get stuck for couple of months or couple of years that could happen also suppose don't buy here rather you wait for correction because 20 days average is below that you know trading price now so you wait for corrections and when it go down you buy it it it, is, it could be a high chance that it may bounce back and you you will be in profit look at from here if you buy here and your stock price comes here look at the bounce back so you will get a huge amount of profit actually so therefore you wait for corrections and whenever if you see the graph of say 200 days or 20 days or 50 days moving average or DMA and if it's trading below that or nearby that you better to buy that time and if it is trading above that you know moving average line so you wait and there will be high chance that there will be profit booking because traders make profit booking investor might not do that but trader will do that and trader will bring it down the stock price and you can get the opportunity to buy it at lower price so you buy that so therefore you know this exponential moving average or dma people call it in this in the the technical analyst talk it talk it as a you know dma but this exponential moving average is very popular in stock market and i thought of giving one example for that as an application but overall you know this is a method you can use in other tech, other application area also it's not that only in you know financial sector you can use it it has a merit only thing is that for the immediate period when there is a say, trend in the data you want to cap, cap, capture the trend or the swing of the data in that case you better to follow exponential moving average than the simple moving average or weighted moving average because here you give some additional importance to the immediate data and that has been also been fixed like 2 by 1 plus n so this way you can you know understand the exponential moving average but in the previous session of today we have discussed the simple moving average and the weighted moving average also now you can conclude that the three methods of moving average process or moving average methods of time series one is the simple moving average another the weighted moving average and the third one is the exponential moving average we have also illustrated in excel i hope you understood the three methods and we can wind up the today's session of moving average and we can carry for the discussion to the exponential series of time series methods in the forthcoming session 
थैंक यू